Well, as I do sometimes, I'm going to finish up my week, my uh, videos with your first video, the opening video. I wanted to think about it all day, what I want to talk about. Obviously, the, the low-hanging fruit, as it were, would be the sale. The sale was tremendous. The week we had a racing was very good. Some of the horses put in awesome efforts. We get some real big races coming up tomorrow in Kentucky. We have two horses racing for 400000 each. We have the Little Brown Jug next week. We have a number of finals throughout Sunday, Monday, Tuesday in Kentucky. We won last week. We won the consolation with Memory and Imagination. Now, unfortunately, he drew nine, going for uh, 100000 in the B Division final on Sunday. But Pickpocket drew in Monday in the final there. Now, if they let him go behind the gate, he's going to be very, very tough to beat. He was awesome the other day. Now, I don't make them, I don't mean to make light of it. Obviously, the job of the veterinarian in Kentucky is extremely difficult to begin with, and there will be a big circle around Pickpocket's name as he goes on the track. She's going to be watching him closely, as she should, I suppose. That's her job. I found him extremely good at the qualifier the other day, and I, uh, and I found him good ever since. That work was done to him. Touched him up. He's in Kentucky right now and uh, in preparation of Monday's race. Tuesday's race. I mean, Tuesday I'm with him. Reason that's important. Sunday we're at the Jug. Jug week starts on Sunday. We get four in tomorrow. We get horses to race Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of Jug week. Obviously the biggest day. Actually, truthfully, the biggest day aside from the Jug is on Thursday. We also have Arrowhead Hanover racing in the Stingerbrick race. So it should be a big day, a big week for us coming up, uh, whether it be Kentucky or the overnights in Ohio or the stakes in Delaware, Ohio. I should say Ohio, Northfield. Stakes in Delaware, Ohio. The stakes are done now in Pennsylvania, but we still have some horses racing there. We had a huge week this week. Drebin was great. Very pleased with him. The horse you might want to watch next week, according to Mike Wilder, anyway, is marching fourth. He said the horse was absolutely awesome, which was surprising. Not because I didn't think he would be. As I said, I've been watching this guy for a long time. He's not a killer. He's not like, oh, my God, prepping him for the open all winter. No, I'm not doing that. But I'm not going this way. But I do believe he is a, a colt that's got a lot of work to do for us, a lot of good work to do, and I believe he is going to be well meant in doing it for the next weeks, months, moving forward. We're assembling a pretty strong roster. Now the foundation of that roster started to be assembled on Friday. Twelve horses we purchased at the sale. We already have seven more to come in our count already before Ontario, Harrisburg, Lexington. For any of those, is 19 already. Well on our way. Our first true crop of homebreds. We had one last year and one or two or something. But our first true crop of homebreds are coming out of the woodwork this year. Eyes of 10, Muscle Chrome, State Park S. Uh, we bought in Harrisburg. He's also in, in our midst now. Who's the other one? Eyes of 10. Oh, a Glarium. Is it a Glarium? I can't think. I don't think it is. We have four homebreds. We have a Philly we purchased already. That's a uh, Ohio bread. We have Miss Mildred's daughter. I know I get a ton of emails about this filly. She's coming. Relax. And Sweeney's sister. So there you have it. We already have uh, 12 and 3 is 15. 16 Ohio breads. And uh, three Pennsylvania breads already, do we? Miss Mildred's full is a Pennsylvania bread. So is Eyes and Tens. No, 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 no. No, we have uh, 17 Ohio birds. 16 Ohio birds. 
well, 17, it doesn't matter. We have more than enough Ohio Brights for 2025, and you know, looking back at the sale, it has been uh, a tremendous run. Sure, I can lament. You know, I wrote, read a text from somebody, a message on, on Facebook from somebody saying, you know, Diamond Creek's purchase of, of uh, uh, Swing Town's full sister or Captain Barbosa or Which Way to the Beach, however you want to call it, all three of them are, are her brothers, it was a tremendous stroke of genius. I was the underbidder, so. It really was, though. I, I thought I just got done telling somebody it's a lot of money to put on the table, but it's she's actually very free for what she's going to be worth as a broodmare. Down by the seaside, sister, a full sister to Swingtown. Swingtown's a favorite in the Metro on Saturday, tonight. It couldn't matter. We could have bid till 8 o'clock at night and they were still going to get her. It didn't matter. And then, of course, the story I told everybody about the Philly that we missed. Again, I've had a million people message me. At least no less than 15 people messed with me saying there is a 0% chance you were getting that Philly. Well, not unless you were going to go way higher than you said you were going. Which I wasn't. There's some solace in that, I suppose. You can't have every horse you want in the sale, but man, when you look at the, the entire body of work, the entire sale, top to bottom, soup to nuts, it's a hell of a job. Anytime you can make a top 10, you are able to acquire four of your top five, especially given the legwork that we put in. I told you guys before I went to the sale, this was the most prepared sale I've ever been to in my life. And of course, you can say, well, you should be that prepared all the time. Well, it's almost impossible, first off. Secondly, you don't know what's going to happen over the next 10 months, nine months. Horses can get hurt, injured, sick, just be no good, or be extra good. And you have no way of knowing that. So it's not so much that we are ill-prepared as that I was just going to leave it to chance many times. And that's where we fall on value, right? But you have to be ready. You have to be ready to get the horses you want. You certainly can't be disappointed with four of your top five. Actually, four of your top four of your top ten, four of your top five that you got. I got number two, three, four, five. All for a lot less than I thought I and, and that I was willing and prepared to pay for them. 12 horses, happy with every single one of them. All of them got great backstories. It was a lot of fun. And you know, for Lexington, I want everybody to know this. You're all invited. We're all going to be viewing horses. I already, I've already had three additional clients message me about coming to view yearlings at Kentucky on a farm. So this Monday morning at 10 a.m., you're welcome to. Of course you are. There are clients. Same goes for Harrisburg. We will be doing our broadcast in Kentucky as we do every year for the past two, three years. Every year it gets a little bit better. It's going to be really cool. So please take that as an invitation from me to you. Everybody, every one of you watching this video are invited to hang out with us, see how we do things, see how we view the horses, what we like about them or not like about them, and talk about them openly as a group as we get ready for Kentucky, as we get ready after that for Ontario or Harrisburg, they're all the same, we're going to view them in the same way, we're going to approach them in the same way, we're going to execute our sales in the same way. So if you find it interesting following along, well, you'll find it very interesting in purpose, in in, in, uh, in person, and you're all you're all invited to uh, to join us. So that was the sale uh, this week. As I said, a tremendous success. We have built a pretty strong foundation for Ohio uh, for Ohio 2025. Very very happy with the sale. Happy uh, to see everybody descend in Ohio. That people that have never been to the sale before. It's first time for Steve, first time for John, I believe, first time for Jim. Certainly not the first time for Randy and Bob, but it was a, a great time top to bottom. Now, this week, as I said, we have horses racing uh, tonight. I'm literally going to make it there about 10 minutes before Lover's Play is going to race. Enough time for, my, for me to get my suit on and jump on the bike. Uh, the judges know I'm coming in a little bit late. They had to withdraw me from the first three races tonight. Um, 
again, I don't, I wouldn't categorize myself as a catch driver, so it doesn't affect me very much. But the draw in Ohio is drawn and finalized theoretically before the draw, not theoretically, literally before the draw in the Meadows. And I was listed on three horses races one, two, and three tonight at Northfield. And then the sheet for the Meadows came out, and I'm in race 10 with Sirius Dragon and race 12 with Patrick the Prime. Well, I don't know how you want to proceed, but I can't, can't be here in time. I was lucky to make it back for uh, for Lover's Play. I love driving her. It's going to be a great night tonight. You know, just such a nice night. When I look at our, our list for uh, Saturday evening, uh, Lover's Play, I had a little bit of a concern with love and infection. She was coughing a bit today. We actually went the extra mile and scoped her, and there was nothing found. Eight dollar breakfast, no temperature, not really enough for us to say we get a scratcher, but you know, I have to ask myself, is it one of these where there's smoke, there's fire situations? We'll see how she races. Uh, Victory Blue Chip races later on also, and, and as I said in an earlier video, might be his last start with us. It's getting rather congested in that Melmore's of four division. Everything worked out well, had they sold a week ago when we are two weeks ago when we entered them in the sale, they didn't. At the time, I just couldn't possibly fathom taking 11000 for Victory Blue Chip, but something's got to give. Over the next week or so, we have other horses coming in. Save America races tonight, man. What a race from Rock Shining Star. Oh, my God. Somebody said, well, he was in the numbers of 4,000. I don't care who it is. He lay parked the entire way. Three turns on the outside on a 5 8 mile track, especially one like Sayota Downs. And they go in 51 and 4. Yeah, many horses are near the photograph. And had he not got bumped halfway down the lane, he was going to the winner's circle anyway. So a hell of a mile from him. Save America has been racing great. Hope to see a great mile from him tonight also. And we've had a great week. Drebin is thoroughly impressed with Drebin's race. Marching fourth, looks like we're going to a clear path forward. If you listen to Mike, Mike told me, he said the horse was absolutely great the other day. And he, he uh, if he had a, got away, I said, Mike, how... You drove him exactly how I would have driven the horse. And I'm as aggressive as anybody. But coming out of the nine hole with a horse that you don't know much about, who shows 55-4 and four in Kentucky, which is like 2-1 at the Meadows. Might be over-exaggerating a bit. He's going from no hobbles in Kentucky, where he's been racing that way for five starts, to putting them back on him. Nine hole on a 5 h mile track where he hasn't really excelled in his life. How could you possibly drive any differently? I think he did a great job. Day before, three point blue chip was awesome. La Dorian, uh, yeah. La Dorian looked great also in uh, in uh, her victory. Drawing off winner, I asked Ronnie Wren, he, he apologized for stay close. He said, That happens. I know the horse. You know, he, he gets away in the front, he just wants to be left alone. And when you're bottling him up a little bit, I, I'm surprised he ran there. But he's made a break on me when I was trying to force him into a hole also. It was the one day I was trying to back him into the two hole in the first turn. He ran for no reason. He said it happens. He'll win next week. But La Dorian, he said, was very, very strong. Super confident. Never put a step in. That's how we want to put them. That's how we want them going on the track. When you've got those horses, those younger horses, that show a lot of talent, got a little back class, but, sh but show talent, but just can't put it all together, you can't always fix them. You, you can't. I worked my butt off my whole life to learn as much as I could about, about trotters. It changes all the time with the breed, but the foundation's the same. And there's going to be some that just don't go forward, plenty of them. But we do our best to pick the ones that will, and hopefully they do. Looks like La Dorian is set up to go in the right direction. Looks like Marching Forth is going to do the same thing. Hopefully the new horse, Bayman. Hopefully he does the same thing. I was outbid on a horse today on Ongate. We're going to continue to look to acquire horses throughout the fall. I think this will be the first year ever in the stable that we have a very, very strong group of horses to race throughout the fall into the winter. We've implemented a strategy where we're going to take the horses that were kind of okay, where we'd race them into the fall, turn them out, bring them back, aim for February, March. Not this time. We're going to aim for Christmas. We're going to have them racing in the winter. 
And before we have to find out if they are good or they're not, we're going to know. That's exactly what we did with Time Is On My Side. Now, of course, it's not done that way, generally speaking, in our industry. So it'll be very interesting to see if this works or not. Maybe Time Is On My Side is just a freak. I have no idea. But we're going to find out. And I think this, as I said, will be the first winter where we have an abundance of horses racing. And we'll continue to move the ones that they can't do or that have overstayed their welcome and move in horses that are looking for a fresh start. And hopefully we can strengthen our stable top to bottom doing that. It's worked so far. We're going to keep our nose to the grindstone. Hopefully it'll continue to work in the exact same way. So I'll end my video this time of year the same way I generally do. With thanking you for having the confidence in us. I hope everybody's having fun or had fun this year, this summer. Not everybody does. I know that everybody, not everybody's horses have been racing great. I get that. We all have been there. We're going to be there again. As long as we continue to try and buy horses that can do good. We will. So thank you again for owning horses with us, buying horses with us. From what looks like virtually selling out Ohio. I've been moving these shares around of horses trying to get groups of shares lined up to release to the to the stable.ca but it's going to be difficult you know part of me says well that's what you were after which I was but I'm always trying to please everybody so I'm doing my best as I can to shuffle the deck get horses moved around so that people can uh, can get involved with the horse they like so I'm going to continue on my way I'm at Northfield Park now I'm going to get out right here in a second <laughs> 12 minutes. I'm going to get out right now um, and go drive uh, our girl, Lover's Play. I'm going to continue to try and work on these shares overnight and hopefully release them for you tomorrow. And then Monday morning, it all starts again. We're going to start with our buckets for Lexington. I'm going to have a little small selection of what Amy wanted to do. I like that idea. You know, our biggest uh, jurisdiction to buy from this time of year. No, Ohio's over, so we don't have to worry about that. Pennsylvania. Ontario. Lots of Ontario horses in Lexington, too. I think it'll be fun. It's going to be a real, a lot of fun. And thank you for the feedback on that. It makes my job a lot easier when we get positive feedback or negative feedback, saying, I don't like this, and this is why I don't, or that's a really good idea, this is why I like it. Thank you all for the, for the communication. I truly appreciate it. Hopefully, it's reciprocated. Hopefully, you guys know what is going on as, uh, as we head into Lexington. But as I said... I say it every year, and I'll say it again. If you haven't been to the Lexington Select Sale, do yourself a favor and go this year. It is a different experience than you will have anywhere else, in at least in North America, in racing. Food is great in Lexington. It's always important to me. The food is great in Lexington. You know who else, else loves all the food is Mike Latessa, Dr. Latessa. I told him, I said, we'll do a video for everybody before Lexington telling you where to go to eat I can think of like five restaurants right now that are fantastic and we're only there for four or five days so there's only so much you can do maybe we will but come to Lexington if you want to have a great time it is a tremendous time the atmosphere is electric on night one and night two as you go through the week and get towards the last day which is a totally different crowd it's more of that grassroots crowd. There's a lot of all. There's 93 horses selling that are Ohio breads. No, we don't need any of them. We have 17 right now. We're good. But there is 93 Ohio breads. I don't know how many Ontario breads. Tons of Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey. It should be a lot of fun. So with that, I am going to let you go. Just short of the 20-minute mark as I pull in here and get ready to race. There's Jason with the bike. Get ready to race Lover's Play. Should be a good night here in Ohio. It was a pretty decent day in Pennsylvania, but you know what? We've had a great summer. We've had a great year. And as I said, I appreciate you letting me execute that with all our trainers. And none of it would be possible if it wasn't for you guys uh, allowing us to do so. So thank you all again. I hope you have a wonderful well, rest of your weekend. You're going to get this on Sunday. I hope you've had a wonderful weekend. 
I will talk to you all very, very soon. Take care.